We are going to be looking at an introduction to what is involved in uh, what are the benefits of doing enterprise architecture. So enterprise architecture as the body of knowledge entails today is helping a lot of companies get over the problem of getting disrupted. Uh, so when we say disrupted, the companies which were like had a 10 year long industry leadership are now forced to pack their bags and in the case of BlackBerry which was the leader in 2009, by 2011 they were completely irrelevant in the industry. Uh, so this body of knowledge helps companies, it's used extensively for the fortune 50s and 500s of the world and it has a tried and tested proven method for doing architecture uh, per se. So we are going to be looking at what this body of knowledge actually entails. So one of the things that uh, this body of knowledge helps you is uh, the ability to go from strategy to execution. So when we say from strategy to execution, it will help you to go from the contextual level, the conceptual level, the logical level and the physical level. Uh, so how do you cross across these layers and how do you add customer value? And then we are also going to be looking at the four dimensions of enterprise architecture such as business, data, application and technology architecture. And now of course there is a fifth dimension which is the security architecture which is getting a lot of uh, prominence uh, which is uh, considered as the cross-cutting concern across these four dimensions. So security is supposed to be a day one candidate in the architecture now on and as opposed to doing it later. So if you see a uh, business architecture is becoming increasingly important uh, in the architecture space and it is about the bread and butter of why we exist in the industry. Uh, so typically there are uh, things such as banking is important not banks. So fundamentally what it means is we need to do banking but how we do banking is not important. We could do it by means of wallet, we could do, by, do it by means of ATMs or teller based uh, physical banking setups. So now these days you've got banks in the world with just a uh, telephone ID and an email and a social security number you can open and do full-fledged banking. If that is the case then why do you need to invest on an IT space and why do you, why do you need to have a full-fledged uh, uh, center paying up the rent and the AC and other things. So that is the world of disruption. So basically this helps you to get a grip on the nature of uh, digital transformation, uh, agile transformations and uh, it also helps you in digital transformation. So that is what uh, the body of knowledge actually entails. So the enterprise architecture body of knowledge entails. And then uh, as you progress in your career, you need to have the ability to mix agility with architecture. So how do you mix agile practices with architecture practices and solve customer pain points? So agile as a framework is supposed to be fast moving and uh, Architecture is considered to be okay. You build futuristic system, futuristic systems. You, um, you know, uh, take a, uh, a long time to ensure that uh, it's supposed to be slow moving. So you take a foolproof approach, and uh, you, one is fail fast. The other is okay. You take uh, calculative and a long term view of the system and try to build things. So how do you move these fast moving things with the slow moving things, and? Uh, what this um, uh, world calls it as potentially shippable increment or minimum viable product is translated into something called uh, uh, continuous incremental business value using transition architectures in the TOGAF world. So TOGAF as you know is uh, an EA framework that shall be used uh, uh, for this uh, particular course and it is becoming a fast becoming a de facto standard for doing enterprise architecture. So we will actually be looking into that. And then we will be looking at what are the skills that are required for a professional to uh, you know have uh, uh, along with this like how does he do stakeholder management, how do you do knowledge management, how do you um, um, you know unify various uh, parts of your ecosystem such as how do you create a boundaryless information exchange between your customers, your vendors and your sellers ecosystem what is called as the boundaryless information flow and then how do you get away from the siloed approach wherein um, different parts of uh, the company are working on the same thing but under different names and uh, it is like what they call taking to the customer uh, for drinks twice to get a deal signed up. So there are teams within your own organizations who are cannibalizing each other and that should not uh, really happen So because that happens because of fragmented architectures or siloed architectures. So that should not uh, be the case. That apart uh, then we see 
how can somebody have abstraction as a key asset for an architect? So how does it grow in terms of abstraction? Uh, so basically the ability to hide the unwanted details and then only project what is really important uh, to the higher layers. So that's a key important as you grow in your career in the architecture path. And uh, uh, how do you have architecture as a mindset? So how do you have an architect's mindset while you are actually creating solutions? And so on. And then it also helps you in a transition from a technology architect to a solution architect, uh, to a senior solution architect, a master architect, and then of course an enterprise architect. How do you transform yourself in this journey? And then uh, what are the different uh, kind of skills that would be ne needed by a person on how he progresses on this uh, journey? So these are the some of the things that we will look as a part of this uh, course. Uh, so uh, essentially the benefits entailed uh, in this uh, course is it helps people to get comfortable with aspects of digital transformation, mixing agile with architecture, going from strategy to execution and then um, uh, you know how, we, how to have a broad based view of the architecture and uh, how to unify uh, and not create fragmented architectures, how to have effective knowledge management, how do you have um, a good ecosystem where you are know, able to do ease of business is done better with the customer, the vendors and the stakeholders. Uh, so all of this is a, a very brief uh, high level overview of what's possible uh, using an EA framework because it helps you to get a good grip on the nature of transformations which is uh, as you know in these uh, you know, trying times it's quite difficult uh, for companies to get a grip on the nature of transformation because so many things happening uh, and if you don't use a best practice approach to approach transformation you could potentially go wrong. Uh, so I think uh, we will look into the other aspects of this course as we delve deep into the other modules. Thanks very much and um, we will uh, proceed uh, the other modules and dig deep into the framework further. Thank you very much.